All right, back for more disco. The rotting man lies on his side. Wait a with... second. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses. Oh wait, I can do it right takes here. A deep breath. I had meant to internalize these two, and I'm about to be doing a lot of looking at this dead body, so may as well get those cooking. What exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. Let's get in there. There truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. I don't know. What, what do you mean? I mean when I need you to. Until then, I should handle physical contact, and you should take notes. We just fill this in, right? That's right. You knew it because you inspected your ledger. The lieutenant is relieved you know the protocol. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... One assistant. That's you. Raphael Ambrosius Gusto. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... Coroner's case number. KK57-0803. Dot 0815. Next. Name. N.A. Next. Date of birth. N.A. Hmm. Age? Roughly 50. The corpse 50. looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Teeming with opportunistic microorganisms, letting out a foul-smelling diamine compound. Your eyes turn watery. Race. Mondial. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither mondial nor anything other. Sex. <laughs> fucky, fucky. Male. <laughs> Pigs could have sex. Nor does he look male, with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of death. We're still going with March fourth, fifty-one. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non-applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment? None, at least not after the initial examination. A strange word, treatment. Exactly is treatment anyway. Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. I'm not so sure. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest, as if in preparation. We should start the post-mortem. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. External examination. Ex what did I just say? External? External examination. Summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. Oh, see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. The boots are ceramic, vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post-mortem. Removal of the boots is left for processing. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. 
The photo is taken on the scene, using a triggered mini. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, 3 meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age, about 50. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with the age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the hair. The hair under your latex fingers feels cold to touch, wet. Stroke it, gently. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to the latex of the glove, like thread off a rag doll's head. All right, write it down. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs, consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Ligature mark. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the bell so we can get to the ligature mark. You got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Oh yeah, I'm prepared. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now, we need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the east. After some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Snap! The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, pulling up. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia... No! <laughs> it's gonna happen, see! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for, ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Does it look like he was enjoying his moment of death? Ah yes, your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. No, I was trying to get the psychic reading. No, you weren't, officer. That would be preposterous. Just write down that we request a semen, vaginal, and anal fluids analysis. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. All he has is genitals and a deathly odor. Inspect the genitals. The dead man's penis is average sized. Congested from the downward collection of blood, the testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. You should touch it. Touch it. Doesn't feel like anything. A cold spot under your gardening gloves. Unremarkable and unalive. My pig's so fucking ill right now. Oh, your pig's pretty sick, I gotta say. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are all combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. Bullets have bitten little pieces out of him. It must have been excruciating, especially the hip. Before you is a temple of pain that knew little tenderness in life. 
In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. This is the body of a soldier. Mercenary. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Of battles, wars, last item, hands. Pick up the hand. His flesh is cold. Icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from? And what's your name? What the? I'm only fucking with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Cobo. What can I do for you, Il Cobo di Cappadocia? Good to hold your hand. Did you like it when I stroked your hair? I did, Kobo, I did. Reminded me of when I was just a small boy before this happened to my face and my body. You did me a kindness there. We should do this more often. Be close like this. I mean... Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Working so close to the fumes coming from the corpse must be hard. You realize suddenly that the lieutenant has been barely keeping it together these past two items. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Internal examination. Summary. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? You don't even have a joke. Nope. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Higher bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. From here, it looks as though the clown-faced man is screaming. The tendons of his jaw are torn apart. Hyoid, ripped from the force of the lieutenant's hands. Take a look inside. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Straight in that mouth of his. No, you don't. You can keep it in. You can keep anything in. Look deeper inside. You manage to suppress the contractions trying to enter your stomach. All it takes is concentration. Through it, you see nothing but darkness. More meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. Hepatobiliary, N.A. Why, we... don't we have anything? Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? I don't think so. Neither am I. That's it? That's it. Same for toxicology and serology, N.A. Both? Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there? The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. We already have one test, as per regulation. And we already requested semen. Pigs requested semen like it's no big deal. Is he touching it again? What is wrong with these mulkers? Yeah. Better leave it at that. More important. Leave it NA, then. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries. Summary. Let's see. We have 
bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Bite marks. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Non-fatal injury. Post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. The lieutenant's admission has caused great gratitude in Kuna. He is silent with it. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non fatal. Post mortem. Right. Next. Ligature mark. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Non-fatal, post-mortem. <clears throat> he is deep in thought. Eyes fixed on the bright red ring around the dead man's neck. A column of cold air encircles you, rising slowly upward in the shape of a courtyard, bordered by cracked plaster, windows, seagulls perched on air conditioning units, a small green enclosure in the middle of a corral of tenements, capeside apartments, whirling in rags and the fortress wall of Terminal B. Above it, a thin blanket of coastal stratus clouds. Higher yet, Coalition airships guard over the 21 cordons of the Zone of Control. The air is crisscrossed with radio transmissions. The hair on your neck rises. Was I right? You were. Why do you say that? Serious. I don't think this was the injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? Why weren't his hands tied? Big man like this? I would tie his hands when marching him to the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right, I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. Let's wrap this up. I pronounced this field autopsy over. How did it go? It was a, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But, personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. We requested a test to be run on the genitals, but was de règle. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. I will not hold my breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Oh yeah, well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order? What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. For processing. He's thinking, did I miss something? Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rooney. At the autopsy, you said you have ancient mysteries. Oh yes, Kobo Milobo, in the gift horse's mouth. Tracts and wakes and waterways. Ancient materials buried. Yeah, but to where, brother? Just a small gulp away. My beloved Kobo. A small gulp away. Which was it that killed you then? Love or communism? Huh? You said love killed you. When you fell down, you said it was communism. You're misquoting me, Rooney. I said communism killed me. Love did me in. 
Enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Okay, I have a few things that I'm kind of unsure about the... Because I need Kim to take the body away. But, as I will talk to Kim right here... We should think about calling it a day, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for my damages yet. You should take care of that, then. But I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. Okay, I just want to make sure that he'll... That talking to him won't force me to my room. Because if it forces me to the room, there's still a couple things I need to do. Uh, particularly get Kim to drive the body away. Because I don't want him to do that tomorrow. I'd rather him just do it right now. Sort of use time best that way. So let's see what he has to say. Good sir. Can I help you? So about the money I owe. Yes. Have you got it? I was wondering if I could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking, and I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. I still have my key, you know. Good luck trying to use it. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. I'll find a way in. I'll break the door down. Oh, wonderful. Try to do that. I'll have to call you an ambulance. <sighs> this conversation isn't going anywhere, is it? Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. Bye. You got some... Oh, right, right. He's going to give me something to sell in his motor carriage. So do that. Oh, is the pawn shop even open? It's got to be, right? Inside. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. Their silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. Thanks, I appreciate your help. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. Okay, I want to go sell these, talk to the guy on the balcony, and then... Okay, let's... And then get him to take the body away and then sleep for the night. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help. Yes. Something I'd like the to sell. Takes the hubcaps from the Oops. lieutenant. Forgot it was dialogue and not just the inventory. The appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger. No matter. 
I'll give you 200 Rael. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Of course, I meant no offense. 200 Rael for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Here's the 30 Rael you need for your bill. Do not waste it. The windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Nope. Another time, perhaps. Take care, man. Okay, now let's go talk to the balcony person. The dude on the balcony. Okay, that just gave me a thought bubble. Sewer gate, great. Gateway to a river of filth. Cause yeah, if I talk to this guy, then he tells me to come back later. I don't remember if he says Wednesday or if he says just tomorrow night. So either way, I'll just get out of the way. Smoker up there could be a witness. Indeed, that's why I'm going to talk to him. You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. Why are you whispering? Sounds like you already are in trouble. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I... It's the god of cigarettes and youth. Ask him if he's got anything to spare. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Looks like you got a good view of the Whirling's backyard. Tell me anything about the hanging? Hanging? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinet's standards. What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Did you? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more... Muscular gentleman. Last week? I don't know. Look. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. What's your friend's real name? You see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the dull and darkening sky, the neighboring windows stand silent. Someone hides behind a curtain. Those windows have eyes, and those eyes are watching, spying on you three. Can you tell me your name? My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. All right. No, I'll talk later. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains? Hey, listen. Just trying to make things okay again. Can we meet again somewhere else? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on. What's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation.
He's gone. We should run after him, see where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So we just give up? He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. Great, let's do that. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Turn Maybe it over. there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments, and a man can be in any of them. How are we going to find the right one? We'll just have to go in and see. I mean, didn't we just see him walk into the... The room? Uh, I think this is the door upstairs? Or is it not? I forget. Where's my flashlight? An old shoe rack. Picture notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. This box is filled with cleaning chemicals. It smells of laundry detergent. Where is this it? Because I think this is someone else. A loud rumbling snore comes from within. Snoring is scary somehow. Oh wait a second. This is it. <laughs> or is it? Oh no, this is this is the front door. The balcony was to my left. I got confused about one, I didn't remember there was two ways to leave there. Uh and two I thought I came in on the left side. So I guess I'm just blind and dumb. Balcony. I'm also kind of curious what my note says. The smoke around the balcony. Ask around for his apartment number. What do you mean? Your distant traffic. Night is falling in the city. The breaker box full of cigarette butts and electric wires. A maroon glow of light produces from the east. It's the door. Nothing for me. Someone's growing rosemary thyme and a cactus. Number 28, a door to be remembered. This is the door to apartment number 29. Complete silence. Whoever lives here isn't home. This is the door to apartment number 30. Voices from within singing along to a, some buoyant dance track. Okay, I still have time left in the day, but I'm like kind of caught up on... Um... If I'm supposed to talk to him right now, because otherwise I don't really know what that empathy check was for. If I could have just, or well, I suppose to get in on the back side, you have to talk to the cleaning lady. But I don't remember what the check is to get you in with her. She's like, "Oh no, I don't want to let you in." Um, someone just drawn a five-pointed star on that the wall. That isn't just a five-pointed star; it's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers the iconography of communism in other words look out kim there's communists around here i keep my armistice handy detective the star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by mezov and the communards during the revolution even today half a century after the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope Disappointment and fear in equal measure. 
Why white? Because white is the color of peace. And why is it upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. What does it evoke in me? Nothing at all yet. Right now, it's just meaningless shapes on a wall. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. Examine it. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Time for a little snip snip. You seem committed to it, so go on. The shackle snaps like a twig, and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. After you, detective. Flamboyant poster of a white star. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Why does a tenant have a bust of Kras Mazov in their room? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. Who is this guy? He's known as the father of scientific communism, also known as Masovianism. His theories about economic history greatly influenced, some would even say sparked, the anti centennial revolution. Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. Book of critical theory on the monstrosities of capital and such. Take all. Wait, is there anybody to talk to in here but the you smoker guy? Walking, knock, knock, walking knock. Walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. This is the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? If you're not of heels. Again, as the other side walks right up to the door. Tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? Not obliged to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. True. This is door number nine and it is locked. Can we talk to you? Do you know about Give the smoker upstairs? The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. Blasting her face with light. This woman's health is failing her. There's not much to do. Not in this damp. You all right? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? I'm looking for Martin Marnay. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. What do you mean? I wasn't joking. Pea brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez. Like Jim Jambrock or Raoul Ravagel. Oops, you really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. How about a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, smoke around the balcony, you know where he lives? Yes, yes, I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No, no trouble. I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Thanks. I'm off. All right. Check the balcony. Tell Kim to take the body away and then turn it in for the night. And that is a big, big productive day of discoing for this first Monday. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. 
number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Sounds good. Tomorrow, 9 p.m. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. All right. At least I got that out of the way. Kim's shadow bouncing around flashlight. The man is decomposing visibly now. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Do I have anything here? Let's drop a quick save before I do that. Make sure everything's gonna be okay. A bit of a safe scummer the here. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep Let's breath. Look one more time. You run your hands Failed. over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. Look at his pants the again. The genitals in his breeches continue to be unnoteworthy. You see the penis of a dead man. If you've seen it once, you've already got the picture maybe if i touch it again there is no need we have been thorough with the genitals do you think we missed something you can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you got a gut feeling there's something more to this corpse okay well we are in leave of mortis here he is disintegrating we need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination and we need to do it fast Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? Hey, wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? Why, yes there was. It was massive. Red eyes glowing in the dark. An absolutely colossal fridge. Still plugged in, literally, in the shape of an ice bear. Yes, now, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge. But I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. The man is... The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Um... Perception 2A... Eh? I got plenty of skill points. Let's do it. Let's try. What? Did I not commit the points there? I did. I guess maybe I have to the man, leave and then the lieutenant try again. His glasses and takes a deep breath. You really ought to ah. know the cadaver is refrigerated. Dig it. Do I want to do it? The man, the lieutenant, adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Your arms Ooh. reach out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips. 
It's right under the palm of your hand. What is this? His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls on his features. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucus of the mouth is slippery, fragile, even through the latex. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. A vision of black and dark red death pried open by your hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. Fuck yeah. Mm hmm Keep going. Kuno nods, too. He takes a step closer. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right into his brain stem. The fuck is happening? Ah, oh, shit, see? The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. The funk soul brother at the back of his head has gone dark forever. Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. The onulations of the limbic system have ended. All is quiet. There's a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Fucking cavity, see? Quivering with awe. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further. But the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. All the muscles in your body harden. Time to enter him. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper. Until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Ice cold serrated metal. Its edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. The pain is barely noticeable under the adrenaline rush. Feel a solid object right under the skull. Can you... can you get to it? There's a tiny crack. A protrusion in the cranium. Right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it. From the inside. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a uh, very small exit wound here. Forget about the fucking exit wound, Beano. The pig is wearing him like a fuck puppet. <laughs> Her voice is absolutely sizzling with excitement. Fish it out. You pick the object between your index and middle finger. Feels sharp, like metal. You press your teeth together. Your jaw is clenched. All you need to do is just... I got it. <laughs> My pig's fucking got it? He's watching his old man get the big prize at the claw game. What? What is it? The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. 
sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower, a blossom made of lead. Fucking beautiful! A bullet. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non-calibre. Rifled. Some kind of brittle alloy. Fractured on impact. Keep it, Lieutenant. As a gift. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate. Back of mouth. High velocity. Temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Sounds about right. Opinion? Fatal injury. God damn right. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. Ligament mark. Fractured hyoid bone. All treatment. Yes. And the belt around his neck. The hanging. Even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Dead. Da da do do. Dead daddy dead dead. Agreed. I have had my doubts for a while now, since I saw there were no signs of struggle on his hands, and no claw marks on his neck. There have been other signs too, small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. I think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the whirling in rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? Well, what happens next? We put him in a bag and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. The body bag should contain the odor for the duration of the transport. I would drive him to processing, but it's too late to do that today. I'll do it first thing tomorrow. No problem. One more thing. This was really good work, detective. The word lingers in the air of the yard. As far away, dogs are barking. Further yet, the sound of motor traffic. Detective. Let's drag him to the Kanima. All right. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Let's do it. Okay, let's take a look at the bullet quick because I just can't control myself. I've got so much to do on the, the first bullet day. Is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny, shriveled head of cauliflower what do i do with you bullet what i said what do i do with you bullet well if i was the bullet which i'm not i would say find the weapon that shot me i don't know if we find who owns it we will have likely found who used it possibly to kill our victim in conclusion the more we know about this bullet of yours the better the squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. 
You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. What can you say about the bullet so far? It's a jacketed bullet, close to five millimeters in diameter. A jacketed bullet, okay. It would have been shot from a military grade breech loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. We were right. This came from a serious weapon. Even the RCM uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. Something tells you that won't be any time soon. This'll have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while. Uh, try to determine what type of weapon shot it. A rifle. Yes. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique. Make? The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belma Grave rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insel Indian Theater of the anti centennial revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you. The dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Anyone still making these rifles? No, but Zeliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Who uses Belmograph rifles these days? Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache, only in working order. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? I think I know where this came from. Okay. And? The shot probably came from an old Belma grave rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Ravachon, really. It's probably a good thing. I have to hand it to the monarchs. It's quite admirable that they took the advice of criminologists last century and banned the use of breech loaders in peacetime. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons. But they realize it's worth it in the end. Worth what? Getting shot? Actually, I think we should have more powerful guns. Or the law. Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. But back to the investigation. Yeah, something mysterious is afoot with this antique bullet type. Mysterious? Okay. Either way, we'll know when we find the gun. The bullet has nothing more to say. Alright. Let's head back inside and pay our man and head to bed. Inside you catch a glimpse of a human paraphernalia. Strike poster, some red pennants. Can I help you? So about the money I owe, yes. have I have it. it. I have well. it. Hope you choke on it. Great, perfect. I hope you enjoy your freezing cold room with the window you broke yourself. You've really worn down his patience. Even paying him didn't help. The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9 p.m. tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, please pay for each night in advance. 20 real per night. If you don't have the money, it's over for you. Got it? You've got nowhere else to stay. I'll take a room here too. 
Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Bye. Come on. Get up those stairs, baby. This is the door to the room. You redecorate it. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right, let's go. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. I didn't know you smoked, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How do you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. Right then, the debrief. Yes, it's been a long and eventful day. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. Our inspection could have been more thorough, as it always can. But we have some leads we can follow up on. Then you shut the body down, which was quite the shot. Damn straight, I'm a sharp shooting cop. On this occasion, I must agree. At any rate, your shot enabled us to perform a field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. Moreover, you found that the hanged man wasn't just hanged, he was also shot. That was some excellent detective work. And you managed to locate and pull out the bullet, so we can get ballistics, make up the gun. All this is invaluable. No big deal. The rest is up to the boys in processing. Maybe they will surprise us by doing the job for once. But I wouldn't count on it. There's still work to be done at the crime scene, however. We mustn't forget that. Now for the interviews. The initial interviews. Yes, well, we talked to some people. Mm -hmm. Including Evart Pierre, a daunting adversary, if there ever was one. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information, however. Tough cookie, that one. We didn't talk to the Wild Pines rep. We really must do that tomorrow. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard <laughs> 41 practice? I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until we get up tomorrow. I don't know why I do the things I do, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. It's impressive, especially for a man your age. And in those hills. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. Thank you for the compliment. We could manage it even in wooden clogs. There are uncanny running reservoirs in this body. God knows why. So what are our powers exactly, RCM? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. 1,000? Why not more? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Revachol. Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold sleep. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. How can you be sure the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. 
it's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. When power calls you, you come. But power itself is a fragile trick of perception. I see. And if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. Wait, so if I kill someone while on duty... You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed the RCM. Silence. A great comment to such a conundrum. The moral intern. What is it? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. I really don't know. That's how bad it is in here. Okay. They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Who is Dolores Day? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. For you, she is something painful. Though it's hard to say why. What's their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something ominous. Something even a little feminine. But in a strict manner. Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. What do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. The lieutenant breathes out a chestnut-scented cloud of cigarette smoke and looks at the city he's sworn to guard. I have an opinion on the moral intern. Do you? Second that, I don't have an opinion. Forget about it. My kind of police officer. The lights of the orphan district are reflected in his glasses. The red and golden orbs of the motorway sliding like pearls on a string from east to west as Revachol commutes back to the suburbs. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Monday is over. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the Union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks, the jurisdictions of our two precincts. And in Jamrock and the GRH? We run this city. 
west of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Night. Captain Ptolemy Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse waits by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead. The sky is black. Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat as he mounts the horse to head home. Rows of houses on either side, hunching over the sidewalks, and Precinct 41 with its dome roof growing distant. Around him, the streets are silent. A kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes the turn on Petition and Main. The horse neighs. The captain nods back. Thanks, kid, he thinks. He's grateful. I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. He is very tired. But the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. Thank you for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Cool. From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bayi. Badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you. And you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. And? Aces high. Hi. For the rest of the world, the Aces High is just a cool Revachol thing, politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades, and those cargo pants could store tools for hotfixing your aerostatic. Maybe you should ask him about this. All right, let's get inside. Holy smokes. This is really dragging on. Forgot about the conversation originally, and then when we came inside, I remembered about it, but I didn't remember it being so long. Where's this? Take all. Go ahead and, uh, bye, This Kim. is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. Run a bath. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Undress, close your eyes and submerge. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks, like sad duckies. You feel nice and lonely, and so, so tired. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. They're not even really thoughts, just assorted sensations. None of them acute enough to focus on. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. What are you doing? You're not some fat fish in a fucking aquarium. Time to get moving. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. 
Words fail to describe how rank it smells in here. Should have sent a poet. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep doesn't come. And then sleep doesn't come. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. Smells of alcohol and sweat and grease. Check the blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed them? Who? Something to do with... What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images Images start forming. <sighs> Do you remember the scent of your childhood? I remember nothing. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? He said, who? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth? I was left. That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle and the other on your dick. Watching her go. Let it all be dragged away from you. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? I can get it all back. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. Elysium? Everything. The pale and the isolas on the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people and you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. I've talked to you before. No, Harry. You were just talking to yourself. That's all you ever do. Even in your dreams. And the act is wearing thin. The spots on the disco ball fade around you. You'll be back in those cold snakeskins in no time. Sweating up the bed. Stinky boy. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I'm trying to solve... I'm trying to solve the case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet. Grinding in your head. 
sense that something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. What? No. Oh yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head. Like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. Good going, buddy. Is that how it's gonna be now when I close my eyes? Yes. Wait till you see the one with the chick in it. It's gonna be a good one. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. What, check? You don't know. You don't know. Some broad that messed you up. It'll come to you. It always does. What the hell's going on with me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. No, that's not it. Really, I feel super good. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. No, I can take this. I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest. Two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. That's a lie. I can do this other speed. Half the town won't be dead. Suit yourself. Slow. Sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Alright, that is it for this disco session. Likes, comments, always appreciated. Till next time, bye for now.